In The Art of War, Sun Tzu wrote that the speed is the essence of war. While he of course did not have amphetamines in mind, he had no doubt had been impressed by our powerful war facilitating psychoactive effects. Amphetamines often called pet pills, go pills, uppers, or speed are a group of synthetic drugs that stimulate the central nervous system, reducing fatigue and appetite and increasing wakefulness and the sense of well-being. The quintessential drug of the modern industrial age, amphetamines arrived relatively late in the history of the mind-altering substances. Commercialized just in time for mass consumption during World War II by the leading industrial powers. That war was not only the most destructive war in human history, but also the most pharmaceutically enhanced. It was literally sped up by speed. Japanese, American, and British forces consumed large amount of amphetamines, but the Germans were the most enthusiastic early adopters, pioneering pill-popping on the battlefield during the initial phases of the war. Nazi ideology was fundamentalist in its anti-drug stance. Social use of drug was considered both a sign of personal weakness and a symbol of a country's moral decay in the wake of a traumatic and humiliating defeat in World War I. But as Norman Oler shows in Blixt, Drugs in Nazi Germany, methamphetamine was a privileged exception. While other drugs were banned or discouraged, methamphetamine was touted as a miracle product when it appeared on the German market in the late 1930s. Indeed, the little pill was the perfect Nazi drug. Germany awake, the Nazis had commanded. Energizing and confidence boosting. Methamphetamine played into the Third Reich's obsession with physical and mental superiority. In sharp contrast to drugs such as heroin or alcohol, methamphetamines were not about escapist pleasure. Rather, they were taken for hyper alertness and vigilance. Aryans who were the embodiment of human perfection in Nazi ideology. Aryans who were the embodiment of human perfection in Nazi ideology can now even aspire to be superhuman. And such superhumans could be turned into super soldiers. We don't need weak people, Hitler declared. We only want the strong. Weak people took drugs such as opium to escape. Strong people took methamphetamine to feel stronger. The German chemist Frederick Hochschild had been aware of American amphetamine Bezadrine ever since the drug had been used as a doping product in the Olympic Games in Berlin in 1936. The following year, he managed to synthesize methamphetamine, a close cousin of amphetamine, while working for Tumlerwerk, a Berlin-based pharmaceutical company. Tumler work began selling methamphetamine under the brand name Pervitin in the winter of 1937, partly thanks to the company's aggressive ad advertising campaign. Pervitin became well-known within a few months. The tablets were widely popular and could be purchased with a prescription in pharmacies. One could even buy boxed chocolate spiked with methamphetamine, but the drug's most important use was yet to come. Dr. Otto F. Frank, Director of Research Institute of Defense Psychology, had high hopes that Pervitin would prove advantageous on the battlefield. His goal was to defeat the enemy with chemically enhanced soldiers. Soldiers who could give Germany a military edge by fighting harder and longer than their opponents. After testing the drug on a group of medical officers, Rank believed the Pervitin would be an excellent substance for rousing a weary squad. We may grasp what far-reaching military significance it would have if we managed to remove the natural tiredness using medical methods. Rank himself was a daily user as detailed in his wartime medical diary and letters. With Pervitin, you can go on for working for 36 to 50 hours without feeling any noticeable fatigue. This allowed Rank to work days at a time with no sleep, and his correspondence indicated that a growing number of officers were doing the same thing, popping pills to manage the demands of their jobs. Wehrmark medical officers administrated Pervitin to soldiers of the 3rd Tank Division during the occupation of Czechoslovakia in 1938. But the invasion of Poland in September of 1939 served as the first real military test of the drug in the field. Germany overran its eastern neighbor by October with 100,000 Polish soldiers being killed in the attack. The invasion introduced a new form of industrialized warfare. Blitzkrieg, the Lightning War, emphasized speed and surprise catching the enemy off guard by the unprecedented quickness of a mechanized attack and advance. The weak leak in the Blitzkrieg strategy was the soldiers, who were humans rather than machines, and as such suffered from fatigue. They required regular rest and sleep which of course slowed down the military advance. That is where Pervitin came in. Part of the speed of the Blitzkrieg literally came from speed. As medical historian Peter Stenop puts it, Blitzkrieg was guided by methamphetamine, if not to say that Blitzkrieg was founded on methamphetamine. 
In late 1939 and early 1940, Leo Conti, the Reich Health Führer, and others sounded the alarm bells about the risk of pervitin, resulting in the drug being made available by prescription only. But these warnings largely fell on deaf ears, and the new regulations were widely ignored. Use of drug continued to grow. At the same time, production revved into overdrive, pressing as many as 833,000 tablets per day. Between April and July of 1940, German servicemen received more than 35 million methamphetamine tablets. The drug was even dispensed to pilots and tank crews in form of chocolate bars known as Flyer's Chocolate and Taker's Chocolate. Armies had long consumed various psychoactive substances, but this was the first large-scale use of synthetic performance-enhancing drugs. Historian Shelby Stanton comments, they, dis they dispensed it to line troops 90% of their army had to march on foot, day and night. It was more important for them to keep punching during the Blitzkrieg than to get a good night's sleep. The whole damn army was hopped up. It was one of the secrets of Blitzkrieg. The Blitzkriegs, dependent on speed, relentlessly pushed ahead with tank troops day and night. In April of 1940, it quickly led to the fall of Denmark and Norway. The next month, the troops moved on to Holland, Belgium, and finally France. German tanks covered 240 miles of challenging terrain, including the Ardennes Forest, in 11 days, bypassing the entrenched British and French forces who had mistakenly assumed the Ardennes was impassable. Paratroopers sometimes landed ahead of the event, causing chaos behind the enemy lines. The British press described these soldiers as heavily drugged, fearless, and berserk. General Heinz Guderian, an expert in tank warfare and leader of this invasion, gave the order to speed ahead of the French border. I demand that you go sleepless for at least three nights if that should be necessary. When they crossed into France, French reinforcements had yet to arrive and their defenses were overwhelmed by the German attack. I was dumbfounded, Churchill wrote in memoirs. I had never expected to have to face the overrunning of the whole communications and countryside by an irresistible incursion of armored vehicles. I admit it was one of the greatest surprises I had had in my life. The speed of the attack was jaw-dropping. High on Pervitin, German tank and artillery drivers covered ground day and night, almost without stopping. Foreign commanders and civilians alike were caught entirely off guard. Some users reported negative side effects of the drug. During the French invasion, these included a lieutenant colonel with the Panzer's 1st Division, who experienced heart pains after taking Pervitin four times daily for as many weeks. The commander of the 12th Tank Division, who rushed to a military hospital due to the heart attack he suffered an hour after taking one pill, and several officers who suffered heart attacks while off-duty after taking Pervitin. Amid growing worries about the addictive potential and negative side effects of overusing the drug, the German military began to cut back in allocations of methamphetamines by the end of 1940. Consumption declined sharply in 1941 and 1942 when the medical establishment formally acknowledged that amphetamines were addictive. So in the end, as you can see, Pervitin was an absolute factor in making sure that the German Blitzkrieg worked. And without the fast-paced and unrelenting attack that the Germans used against their enemies throughout World War II, it would have never happened. Blitzkrieg needed a fast-paced lightning that couldn't allow any of their enemies to regroup, reform, and maybe even get a battle line going for the next attack. But with this drug fueling them to go 72 hours without sleep, without food, and without fear of death, it created a monstrous onslaught of superhuman-like soldiers that if you went up against them, you feel like there is nothing that you can do to stop them. And with that, this will be the end of the episode. Thank you guys so much for coming and joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know down below in the comments if you agree or disagree and any other video ideas that you might have. Also, thank you guys for the massive amount of support I have recently received. I just had 250 subscribers and that is a huge milestone for me, so thank you guys so much. I appreciate everything that you guys do and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.